Hi, this is Catherine, and welcome back to Taking Tea with Catherine. I'm drinking out of my Taurus mug again, because I'm going to do some time travel once again. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself, by the way, because I haven't done a December TBR yet. I plan to do that soon, but because the month is drawing very much to a close. But um, I've decided to look into 2020, 2020 vision, <laughs> if only, and uh, to talk about some writers that either I have never read and intend to read in 2020, or some writers that I have read at least one book of, but haven't read any of their work in a while, and intend to, or at least hope to. So I'm not drinking tea right now, I'm drinking water because I just need to hydrate, thinking about all these things that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> also, oh by the way, I think a few days ago we just hit the... Um, 56th anniversary of the TV show Doctor Who, so that's kind of cool. Haven't been really watching that much recently, although, no, that's not true. I did recently watch the episode with Agatha Christie because I was in the mood for it again. But let's get started and talk about some writers that I haven't read yet. And the first one is Colin Dexter of Inspector Morse fame. I've watched almost every episode of Inspector Morse and every episode of Endeavor and also the other spin-offs spin-off and they're all great but I just want to read and I just got a hold of two of the omnibus collections not the first one but um I don't think I have to wait to get the first one but you know that would be kind of cool to read it in order but I'm also I know what happens basically in his life so I don't need to read it in order so um that's one and um some of these uh, you've probably seen recently in my, um, what's the word? Haul. That's the word. It, my haul. And um, this is one of them. It's very recent that I bought this one. But I also have the other book, um, another book of his. But John Lister K. I just have heard nothing but good things about his nature writing. And I do like reading nature writing. I, I think it's an important part of my diet. And... I've had a good couple of months right now of reading October with the Victorian novels, November with nonfiction November, and I know going to December, it's I have already some things planned and we'll talk about that another time, but I feel like, of course I'm going to do some challenges, very much intend to, in 2020, but I really want to, on the average month when there's no like month challenge, I intend to keep... A variety of different types of books, different kinds of genres, nonfiction and fiction, and definitely nature writing is going to stay a priority. And definitely he's one of the ones I want to start with. And the rest here are all novels. So I somehow never read Nancy Mitford. I thought I had, but I was very much wrong and so that's why I think I've done something it probably means I haven't but I've been wrong with that before especially well especially with nonfiction because I don't always remember the name of the writer so if someone says have you read anything by so-and-so I might be no and then find out later I did but even sometimes with fiction writers for instance I think his name is George Gissing I had heard him mentioned during October and then I realized I had read one of his books so but I definitely did not read anything from Nancy Mitford, and um, The Pursuit of Love seems like a good place to start, so let's hope I can get to it. You know, when I'm showing you a small um, size, lightweight paperback, it usually means I'm going to have a better chance of getting to it, because I could bring it with me everywhere. And I do read a lot at home, but let's face it, it's nice to be able to take things with you. When I can. Which is always. I always bring something with me. Alright, so here's another one that... I thought I read something by him, but it turns out I didn't read anything by this writer. In fact, <laughs> very sadly, I collected some of his work and didn't actually read any of it, which is kind of sad because that's not... I, I. It's nice to have a collection, it's nice to have a library to read from, but you really need to read the books you have as well. So we're talking about Dostoevsky. And, um, of course, Tolstoy, I also have to, speaking of Russian novelists, I have to get cracking and actually finishing his books. But I have not even started Dostoevsky. And I have this, Crime and Punishment, which is one I might like. I don't know. I, my dad read either this one or The Brothers Kar Karamazov. Karamazov, I think. And I have a copy up there somewhere, but I realize it's lacking its cover. So I don't, it's not as appealing to me, which is sad. Um, and I also have The Idiot, which is really the one I should read, right? 
but this is also very compact even though it's hardcover it's easy to carry so this might be the candidate whereas the idiot's kind of big here's a writer i did read one of his books where at least i started but i never completed any of his books and i think that it would be a good idea to do so and um it got some stains on it i don't know why i don't know how but anyway, F. Scott Fitzgerald. So this is The Great Gatsby, which is probably my intention of books to read. Because I have other ones, but I think, I think my book club might be reading this next year. Because they, you know, it's considered a 20s book and we're going into the 20s. So maybe. And also, easy, easy to carry. I know what happens in this book. Um, so, but I might want to read it anyway. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Now here's another one which I am surprised I never got through one book. I started reading the first book in his series and nope. So Proust. So as you know, he read he wrote Rem Remembrance of Things Past or In Search of Lost Time. I don't know why it's called something different each time. I don't know if it has anything to do with America or France or whatever, whoever writes it, but... Anyway, I know I enjoyed reading the first one, Swan's Way, but I didn't actually finish it. Which I, I always say doesn't mean that I don't like something. Sometimes I just get sidetracked by my billions of other books that I'm reading. And sometimes, if, especially if it's a library book, and I have to return it. So anyway, um, I don't have to return this. I've had it for a long time, and I have the second one too. There's two books in one, I think three books in the second. So it would be good to start that one. So now we're going to move into writers I have definitely read before, but I just haven't. And the first I haven't read recently. One is, I don't know, I, I never know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Hilary Mantel or Hilary Mantel. Um, I have a copy of Wolf Hall somewhere, but I don't think I have it here. It might be my job. I don't know. Anyway, I love Wolf Hall and I love to bring up the bodies. And there's a third book, which... The name, the title is escaping me, but it's coming out next year and I'm dying to read it. So I'm just going to get to it somehow. I'm going to. Um, this is probably not the next book I want to read in this author's collection, but I just, it's easy to show you. George Eliot. The last time I read a George Eliot was Daniel Deronda, which was at least four or five years ago. So, and I miss, I miss her books. So that would be good. Uh, Shakespeare. <laughs> They're so tiny. So I bought this collection. It's like a little box set <laughs> in Barnes and Noble. I think it's 2002. Cause I remember specifically I was with my friend Stephanie and we were going to Alice's Teacup, which is one of my favorite tea places in the city. And we went first, I think first or maybe afterwards, cause like I said, 17 years ago to, um, Barnes and Noble, and it was in the sale section. I said, I could get the entire collection of Shakespeare for a low price. And I did. And even though, oh, it's hard to read. But if I'm in the right mood, and if I'm in the right amount of light, and I do have up-to-date glasses so far, I probably could read at least one of these volumes. I have done so before. I have never read King John or Henry the Fourth. I have read Richard II. This is just one of many of Shakespeare, in case you don't know. So I would like to just pick up one Shakespeare. I don't know which one. It doesn't matter, because just one would be good. I meant to this year. It didn't happen. All right, so next, Josephine Tay. Tay or T? T? I would like to say T, because, you know, taking Tay with Catherine doesn't sound right. This one's called A Shilling for Candles, but I have a few more of her books. And I read... Daughter of Time, which was about, um, actually it was a novel about investigating Richard III in the future. Like there was a, I think it was a detective or something who was in a hospital and he just decides to look into it as a way to pass time. And I just love the writing and I think I'm going to write, I think I'm going to enjoy the rest of her books. So I don't remember the last time I read that book, but it has to be, have been a few years ago. Okay. I mentioned this writer often enough, but I haven't read Elizabeth Gaskell quite as much as I should. And I definitely have not actually read North and South, which is really, really a shame. So I should read North. I'm sorry. I really should read North and South. So that might be the next one. I also have The Life of Charlotte Bronte. And being that I just read The Victorian and the Romantic, and they, they talk about that a little bit, I kind of want to read that. 
There were parts where they were talking about her other stories, Mary Barton, I think, and Sylvia's Lovers, and they, I could tell they were going into spoilers, and I just sort of, you know, blurred up my eyes a little bit so I wouldn't see it. Because I, I don't, even though I know classics, you, it's hard to avoid spoilers, I just, I think I should be able to avoid spoilers of Elizabeth Gaskell. She's not that well known. But we should make her more well known. So yes, North and South is one of her more famous ones. It would be great if I could actually read it instead of just having read or having seen the adaptation, which was very good. Okay, who am I missing? Um, yeah, I think we've covered pretty much everybody except Charlotte Bronte. And I just got a hold of this copy. I showed it in my haul recently and I always say I like Charlotte Bronte and not as much as Jane Austen, not that it's a competition on my part, but I haven't read a lot of her stuff. I definitely read Villette. I definitely read a book that was called Emma, but it, I think it was some unfinished writing of hers that they put together and for some reason called it Emma, even though technically that's not what it's supposed to be called. It's, I just, I'm not an expert in Bronte enough to say that, but I definitely remember when I got it, that's what it was called. However, I I read a graphic novel, I've seen adaptations, I've gone through the novel. I'm not sure, and don't kill me for this, I am not sure I've actually read Jane Eyre. So that would probably be the one I should read, and I have a paperback. But I also have not read Shirley and or The Professor. So any one of those three would be a good idea. And if anyone knows anything about that Emma book, or whatever it's actually called, any of my followers or anyone who watches this who is more of an expert on Victorian literature than I am, and especially more of a Bronteite, Bronteist, Brontosaurus, um, just let me know if you've heard of it or what it's actually called now, because th those are one of those things that I just, it, you know, it's not, you know, when you think it's, oh, it's just a fuzzy memory, but I specifically remember this book. I remember seeing it in either high school or college in the library, taking it out. So I don't own it, which is why it's kind of fuzzy, but Anyway, so if you guys, obviously, is this kind of a TBR? Because the ones I, I showed you are kind of the ones I think about, I'm thinking about reading, but it might not be that one specifically, so it's kind of a somewhat TBR. Um, if you guys see this and say, well, okay, she mentioned the book she hasn't read, but this one is definitely the better one that I think she should read. Not that, you know, opinions are always, but I do welcome opinions. I do. So if you have an opinion, please let me know. And, um, and who, who should be my priority? I always, you know, cause there's a, quite a lot of people there who I may not get to, but I, you know, if there's anyone I should definitely prioritize. I did manage to read some this year. I got back to Trollope and that's great. And I started, uh, his mom, Mrs. Trollope. So that's also great. Um, I obviously have the children's classics that I'm going to talk about later. So maybe Burnett, Burnett. It might be someone else I put in this list, but be that as it may, your recommendations are always appreciated and, um, and that's it. So, um, any, any comments are always welcome. And this has been taking water in a, in a tea mug with Catherine and hope you've had a lovely day.